Today I'm going to show you how to guys show you how show you guys how to make um, a slip cork rig. Um, there are three types of floats you can choose to use. Um, these 88 cents floats that are big and orange, easy to see out in the water. But the, the down part about this is when you set the hook, the top part right here kind of blocks water. It's not really hydrodynamic. If you can, if you look into these, they're a little bit they're coned in, so like it blocks water. It's, it's not that good for setting hooks. Like um, I missed a lot of trout if I use these. Um, the other types of floats I like to use are the cigar floats for light conditions on light tackle, or an egg float. Um, egg floats are better for me when it's a little bit windier, and uh, I like to throw these out for trout and reds. Okay, first off, you get your fishing line, your clean fishing line with no knots or anything. Make sure it's clean. Uh, this is spider wire, 30 pound. I like to use braid. You can buy one of these bobber stops at Academy. They're probably like a pack for 288 for like six or something. Or you can buy the big pack for 10 bucks and there's like 50. You put this in first. Um, put the bobber stop in first. And they come with these little green beads that have a smaller hole than the regular beads. You slide that in next. because this will be my BTB rod going after snacks alright and it just goes right through pretty easily this um for slip corking rig it's really nice to fish all sorts of water depth without changing over and over um you I like to fish live bait with the slip cork rig but um you can fish dead too they're really nice to use it keeps the bait at a certain water column. Say if there's 15 feet deep, you want to fish at 10 feet, you adjust the knot to 10 feet. What's next is you just add some beads if you want to, to make some more rattle noise. And then you add your the weight that you want for it. Um, I like my floats to be right at half. Some people like to be under a little bit, a little bit more than half or whatever they want. It floats higher, I guess. Okay. You have your two beads in. You have your two beads in. You have your bobber stop here, that's not tied yet, alright, then you have the smaller bead, then you have your cork, another bigger bead, your weight, another bead at the end. Okay, next part you just tie it to a black swivel, whatever kind of swivel you're going to be needing. I'm just using regular swivel, I found somewhere in my tackle box. Alright, just do a quick knot. Make sure it's nice and tight. Alright. Alright, so after all this is done, it should look like this. Oops. Alright. Here's the finishing thing. This is how a slip cork rig look. It slides up and down whenever it wants. Alright. Um, to tie the slip cork on, this bobber stop knot on, you just slide it off. You slide off like that and it falls off. And you pull tight. Make sure that knot's really tight. Because if it's loose, it's just going to slide up and down and it's not going to work effectively. And then you just come a little tighter. If I can ever grab the other side. Or pull tight, and that's good. Now you can slide it and adjust it to however deep you want to fish. And I'll stop the cork. And it's probably about a foot deep. It's really nice to go after for fly bait. At the end, all you do is at the other end of the swivel, you can attach your steel leader, steel wire, whatever. I just attached 30 pound mono with the size 8 triple hook. And um, I kill trout like this all year long. Especially during spring. Those monster trout, perfect. Perfect at the jetties. Alright. And that's your completed. That's your completed slip cork rig with your bobber stop. Oh, and don't forget to cut these shorter because these will get tangled if you don't cut them shorter. But um, a lot of people fish like this, especially Asian people out in the jetties.
that's it. Thanks for watching.